Good, a very good afternoon, Tennessee Aquarium Facebook fans. Thank you for joining us today. We told you we'd talk about snake neck turtles, and we'll get to them snake neck turtles in just a minute, but <laughs> this guy was enjoying his salad, and I thought you might enjoy getting a close-up view of him because he's so stinking cute. <laughs> Look at him munching on that tomato. It's one of his favorite parts of the salad. If you want to, raise your hand and let us know if you like tomatoes on your salad. This little guy is having a great time. Munch, munch, munching away. We're gonna be joined momentarily by herpetologist Mackenzie Strickland. And Mackenzie has the awesome job of not only preparing beautiful salads like this for our turtles, but also for caring for all kinds of turtles here at the Tennessee Aquarium. We're actually coming to you from behind the scenes at the Tennessee Aquarium's brand new turtle nursery. We got a whole bunch of baby turtles here. Laura Anthony, thanks for raising your hand. You like tomatoes on your salad. Thanks everybody for watching this afternoon. Mia, Stephanie, thank you for tuning in. Get ready to ask Mackenzie Strickland some questions. And let's uh, kind of go down the row here. We're gonna take a quick peek before we get to Mackenzie. Baby turtle, baby turtle. Two baby turtles, two more baby turtles. And here is Mackenzie Strickland, the star of our show with one of our favorite turtles. Good afternoon, Mackenzie. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'm gonna come over your shoulder and we'll take a look this way because people will hear you better. Sounds great. Tell me who this is. All right, this is a Rhodey Island snake neck turtle, also called the McCord snake neck turtle. And this little guy is pretty adorable. A lot of people are oftentimes confused by why they have such a long neck, right? They're called snake neck turtles for a reason. They do have a really long neck. And if you just see the neck and head, it kind of does look like a snake. Now they have really long necks for a specific reason, and that's simply because they're carnivores and they can reach out really far and strike out pretty hard in order to get their prey. Now this little guy is a critically endangered species. Um, not all snake neck turtles are, but this species of snake neck turtle is a critically endangered species, and that's mostly because of the pet trade. So people get these turtles out of the wild in Rhodey Island of Indonesia, and they end up using them in the pet trade. Now, another one of the reasons as to why this population or the populations of this particular species isn't doing fantastic is simply because of the fact um, that they are also experiencing habitat um, issues, different destruction, yeah, if so you will. Th this is pretty amazing because sometimes people think that turtles can just pull their, their head inside their shell and close up. And we know that Tennessee state reptile, the Eastern box turtle can do that, but mm -hmm. certainly this guy cannot and many other turtle species do not. So tell us, what about this neck? What's he do? He kind of pulls around the side, doesn't he? He does pull it around the side. So they kind of go in sort of like a little S shape and they pull their head to one side or the other because they can't pull it in. And in order to protect themselves, because they are kind of more vulnerable to predation or more likely to get eaten by something, um, because of the fact that they can't bring their head back into their shell, they're more aggressive species, the snake neck turtles are, than a lot of other turtles, simply because that way it allows for them to kind of be able to protect themselves a little bit better. So they can strike out and they have pretty powerful beaks to get a hold of um, those different prey items and protect themselves as well. Well, this little baby turtle doesn't look very ferocious at all. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> but if you've ever been to the Tennessee Aquarium, there is a huge turtle replica of a fossilized shell that was found in South America. And it was a freshwater turtle that got to enormous proportions. That shell that's on our wall here is a good seven feet across. And guess what, folks? That species was a snake neck turtle. So imagine this little guy, how long his neck is in comparison to his shell. And then think about that ancient species that lived during the time of the dinosaurs and how massive that neck must have been. And Mackenzie, 
other people can see snake neck turtles in one of our exhibits right across from that shell right now. That is very true. So we have several different species of snake neck turtles from Australia and New Guinea that are found in a large uh, snake neck stronghold exhibit. And you guys can check out some large adults and see the size differences between these adorable baby Rhodey Island snake necks and those other species of snake necks that are quite a bit larger. And it's so fun to see him stretching that neck out. When these guys walk, they sometimes have their head raised and extended out from their shell. They look like little brontosauruses. They very much do. <laughs> but look at that cute little face and those eyes are adorable. And this is turtle number one. We've got so many other turtles to look at. And while Mackenzie is getting our next turtle, I'm gonna scroll through the feed here and see if anybody has any questions for Mackenzie. Uh, it's great to see so many people watching from all over the place. If you'd do us a favor and give us a shout out, let us know where you're watching. Callie Copeland, Missy Bracklin, Philip Bonine, thanks for watching. Ramona Davis and Catherine Morgan, thank you for watching. <laughs> and Jeannie Robertson has green hearts and baby turtles. And we love our baby turtles here at the Tennessee Aquarium. What's really cool about this particular exhibit, the Turtle Nursery, is this is collaborative work with other zoos and aquariums and other institutions that love on turtles and want to save them from extinction. And so these baby turtles, as Mackenzie just let you know about, many of them are critically endangered in the wild. And so zoos and aquariums working together can save these species from extinction by caring for them in special places like the Tennessee Aquarium's turtle nursery. And here's a couple getting some exercise. Kelly Calvert, thank you for watching. Terry, thank you for watching. And Monique, thank you for watching. Chris, Diana, and Beverly, thank you for watching. And Diana, thanks for watching. If you have some questions for Mackenzie, let's post them in the comments. We'll see if we can get to them uh, as soon as possible. Coming back over here to see Mackenzie with our new turtle. Mackenzie, who is this? This is a spiny turtle, also known as a spiny hill turtle. And the spiny turtle is endangered and is found in Indonesia and southeastern Asia. And this species, as you can tell, has a clever name because of the fact that, of course, it is very spiny. Now, I do want to point out that this is a very young turtle. Again, we are in the turtle nursery. This is a baby. And this guy has a very, very spiny shell, okay? But when they're older, their shell kind of elongates. It becomes a lot more um, oval-shaped as opposed to the kind of round or almost heart shape that you see here now. And the spines nearly go away as they age, which is pretty cool. So they're more protected when they're very young and more vulnerable to predators trying to come and eat them because they have those spines that help protect them. Another interesting and kind of odd thing about the spiny turtle is it has a really beautiful plaster on or bottom of its shell and it's all unique. In other words, each individual has their own pattern, just like you and I have different fingerprints. So it's really interesting um, how that works out. These turtles are awesome little turtles. They're not as active as the snake necks and some of the other species. They do kind of just like to sit around in one place and enjoy their laziness, but they are fantastic little turtles. They get another yeah. endangered species here. You know, these their days. shells are so beautiful and it's, it's kind of surprising. You know, I understand why they call them spiny turtles, but flip them over one more time. It's almost surprising that they're not called the zebra striped turtle or something else because that bottom mm -hmm. uh, pattern on their shell just really reminds you of zebras uh, out in the, the plains, the savanna of Africa. Gorgeous turtles. Very beautiful. One of my favorites. So we've gotten some questions here. And so our first one is from Ronnie Dion. And Ronnie would like to know, how many eggs can a mom turtle lay at one time? So I'm guessing could be different for different species. It very well could. So some species of turtles are only gonna lay one to two eggs per clutch. Um, and then some can lay over a hundred in a given clutch. It very much depends on what the species is. For instance, the spider tortoise, like the one that Tom was showing you guys at the very beginning, if you guys remember that part where uh, the tortoise was eating the salad and eating some of those tomatoes, uh, that animal is a spider tortoise, and the spider tortoise only lays about one egg per clutch. But sea turtles, for instance, can lay over a hundred eggs in a given clutch. And a lot of the freshwater turtles are going to lay somewhere in between, oftentimes just a few. Um, the Florida red-bellied cooter, for instance, can lay up to 22 eggs. Um, but again, that's a maxed out 
point. They are always not always going to lay the same number of eggs per given clutch. And some turtles can lay only one clutch in a year. Some don't lay one for several years at a time. And then some lay multiple clutches every single year. Now, is this the same species of turtle we were looking at earlier? It is not. It this looks is, similar. It does look very similar. This is the Burmese star tortoise. This is a baby before we were looking at an adult female. Um, and that was for the spider tortoise. Again, these are baby Burmese star tortoises, another species that is critically endangered. They are adorable. Look at that face. You know, I think um, different people like turtles for different reasons, but to me, you know, it's like they have this amazing and beautiful home that they carry on their back. They do. And sometimes people think that they can just like a hermit crab crawl out of that i remember the bugs bunny cartoons <laughs> where the tortoise would get out of his shell and take a shower yes yeah, so the and franklin so, cartoons yeah were so i think that you know sometimes you know media and cartoons probably play into that but mm -hmm. fact of the matter is the shell is actually part of their body right that is very true it's actually made of bone and covered in a keratin overlayer keratin for those of you who uh, don't know or may not remember is just what our fingernails and our hair are made of and um, for some species that overlayer actually peels off in little sheets over time as the shell continues to grow so the shell grows as the animal grows it actually has their spine and their rib cage as part of the shell itself and again it's going to grow the whole time they are born or hatched out of course with the shell um, and from the time that they hatch until the time that they pass away that shell is ideally going to keep growing and going to keep becoming harder and harder and harder as they age for our hard shell turtles. Well, this is Tortoises. great. We've got people from all over the place watching. Again, if you have any questions, Mackenzie would be happy to answer any of your questions. Turtles are fascinating creatures. The Tennessee Aquarium has had a lot of turtles here on display because turtles are really important to the environment and they are found on almost every continent. The only continent they're not found on is Antarctica. And so it was really important for the Tennessee Aquarium to showcase these animals and to talk about their role in aquatic environments and really tell a complete story when you come to the aquarium, not only of the fish that live in a certain part of the world, but some of the other animals that share those same important watersheds. So what are we looking at here, Mackenzie? This is a keel box turtle. And the keel box turtle is pretty cool because as we were mentioning before, some species of turtles can go inside their shells and close up. Um, some can pull their head kind of back into their shell partially, and others, like the snake neck turtles, can't do that. They kind of just turn it to one side or the other. Um, the keeled box turtle, being that it is, in fact, a box turtle, can completely close its shell up if it chose to do so. Now, it's interesting. So, as a herpetologist, one of the things that I have to do is to check the adult female turtles for eggs and be... Um, check by kind of inserting our fingers around the back legs and kind of feeling around as we very gently move the turtle back and forth to see if we feel any eggs. And if we can't feel it during that, we'll also do a radiograph and see if we can see the eggs inside of the body. Now, it's interesting because with box turtles, you really have to watch your fingers. Before, when I've palpated one of our female turtles, my fingers definitely got stuck <laughs> inside there. They will close them up on your fingers, so you do have to be quite careful. Um, but they are amazing little turtles. There are several different Asian species, and of course we have some here right in the United States, right even in our area. Again, the eastern box turtle, um, the three-toed box turtles, another turtle that you can find that's a box turtle here in the United States, and so forth. So there are some beautiful little box turtles, and again, those guys can completely close their shells. Yeah, so um, Bella Walker would like to know why are they endangered? Her son wanted to know why are turtles endangered? And so for various species, there might be a specific reason, but in general, most turtles face the same threats. They do. Um, so habitat destruction is one of the main reasons that they are endangered. Um, another thing would be the food trade. In other words, a lot of people eat them in different parts of the world. Not only the adult turtles, but also the youngsters and the eggs. And then they're also used for medicinal purposes along with that. And then finally, of course, the pet trade is another really big hazard um, to the the turtle populations around the world. And some people might be surprised to learn that even here in Tennessee, there are people who try to steal turtles and ship them to other parts of the country in the illegal wildlife trafficking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we think about elephant ivory and other uh, rhino horns and shark fins, but believe it or not, 
there's a lot of people that are trying to take turtles out of places like Tennessee and send them other places, and that's not good. the SAFE program for North American turtles. In other words, um, the SAFE program is just saving animals from extinction. And again, we, we do the North American turtles. And we take in confiscated animals that people have that they maybe were planning to send to other countries or other parts of the country that they're not supposed to have. Uh, and they don't have the proper permits to have. And they are breeding them maybe and just different things that come along with that. We take them in, we care for them. Um, get them in good health and sometimes they stay with us sometimes they go to our partner institutions um, and it's just an idea that you know we have a responsibility to take care of these animals and help them as humans are one of the main problems as to why they are currently endangered and one of the species that we actually have quite a few that were confiscated are the spotted turtles and those guys are right down here aren't they they are they are right over here these actually were confiscation turtles uh, that came into us from upstate new york and again, we don't know all the, the different scenario with what happened to those particular individuals. There is a court case um, that goes along with those guys and we don't know all that information, but we do take very good care of the turtles once we get them in, nurse them back to health, put them through our normal quarantine, but we also keep our confiscations in a little bit longer in quarantine just to make sure that they're all healthy and good to go. People probably don't realize it, but turtles are curious. And look at these guys. <laughs> They came right over when Mackenzie, I think they recognize you, Mackenzie. They do. They know I'm the lady that feeds them. They, they recognize my face. Now, most people don't realize um, that turtles actually do have facial recognition, but they do. They definitely respond to me for a vast majority of species. They respond to me and some of my coworkers that feed them as well, much differently than even our other coworkers. Yeah. Even with the mask on. Even with the mask on. <laughs> well, it makes sense because look at those beautiful markings on this guy's face guy or gal, I'm not sure. Juvenile um, for now. <laughs> but um, with the markings on the face, it would make sense that they could recognize each other because the stripes are unique, right? They are all unique. They're all gonna be just a little bit different. Again, like you and I have our own fingernail, or fingerprints and toe prints as well. Cool. All right, let's see who else we have here. You have a favorite, and I, I know it's hard for you to say because all <laughs> turtles are your favorites, but tell yes. me about this guy because clearly, mm -hmm. This is one of your favorite turtle species. This is. This is the big-headed turtle, and although I do love them all, I do have some that I am extra well-bonded to, and the, the big-headed turtle is, is one of them. Now, this big-headed turtle gets its name, of course, from the fact that it does have a very large head. Okay? Proportionate to its body, it is very large. We saw a couple of other turtles not far Much off from the Much different than the Rhode Island snake neck, who Definitely had a very slender very head. Different. Um, you can see this really long tail. Let me get that better in view there, Tom. So this very long tail is very, very powerful, okay? And it actually helps them to climb upstream um, in the habitats where they live in different parts of Asia. And the big-headed turtle actually gets decently sized, and their head is much more disproportionately large when they're older. Now, this guy is going to eat different types of fish. He's going to eat, um, here at the aquarium, things like mice. Um, crickets, super worms, different types of insects, in other words, just different high protein diet as he is a carnivore. Now, some different zoos and aquariums have actually had um, their big head turtles eating a little bit of vegetation too so far with this baby. I haven't had any luck getting him to actually um, be interested in eating vegetation, but he does love his high protein and he goes for it immediately. Looks like he's checking out um, a child on the other side of our tank here. Yep kind of investigating and seeing what's going on over there. They have a beautiful striping pattern. I do want to point that out on the side of their face for the big kind of turtle. Yeah, that's a beautiful Another stripe. Beautiful characteristic that that species in particular is going to have. All right, we're getting some great comments here. And Tira, thank you for saying Tennessee Aquarium is your favorite place. We appreciate you. Hope you can visit us again soon. Carol Grant and Amanda Hackett, thank you for watching. Rachel Johnson, thank you for watching. And Brad Hamilton, we appreciate you tuning in as well. Uh, let's see, we got a comment here. Lisa Lawrence says, we love box turtles. We see them often after summer rainstorms. We've even had a female or two come onto our property. This time of year, Mackenzie, are box turtles still moving around or is it getting a little bit late in the season? On the cooler days especially, you're not going to see them be quite as active. Now, I do want to point out with box turtles here in our area, 
they actually only have about a mile span of further range, so they're gonna probably come back to your yard again if you've seen them before. That's probably part of their about one mile um, of land that they travel regularly, known as their home range. So it's fantastic that you guys are seeing some box turtles. I hope yeah. that you enjoy them. And those turtles are long lived, so if you have a turtle in your yard, it's chances are gonna be there again next year, and it could have been there for 40 or 50 years mm -hmm before you even moved into your home, right? That is very true. And some people actually, some scientists and so forth, will actually mark them a little bit. In other words, put just a tiny little bit of nail polish on the back of the shell, so that way they can identify if it's the same turtle or a different turtle later. All right, we've got a whole bunch of people watching. Um, I'm gonna step over here because there's a couple of turtles that I think you have got to see. And where did they go? Here they are. Look at these guys. <laughs> they have beautiful heads. Look at the markings on their heads. And I know this isn't the green-headed turtle, so Mackenzie, help me out. Who is this? The yellow-headed box turtles. Yellow-headed box turtles. <laughs> and they actually are listed as critically endangered by the IUCN status that they currently have. However, they are known to be functionally extinct in the wild at this point. So what does that mean if a turtle is functionally extinct in the wild? It means individuals of many of their populations in quite some time in their natural habitat. Okay, so it could be that the remaining individuals that are in human care at zoos and aquariums are the last ones left on the planet. It could be. So that's such a sad story because these guys are absolutely adorable. They're very colorful and it's such a shame that we don't have many of them living out in the wild, but it is good to know that zoos and aquariums are working collaboratively to make sure that we save these turtles for future generations to enjoy so these guys don't vanish like the passenger pigeon or so many other animals that have gone extinct. Susan Thomas says, turtles are so cute. I actually just moved a snapper that was under the tire of my elderly neighbor's truck back to the Stones River. And Susan, that's great. Uh, snapping turtles, you gotta be a little careful. Gotta especially, be brave, digging a little guys. Especially <laughs> common snappers because they have really long necks. They do, and they're actually more aggressive, in my opinion, than that of the alligator snapping turtles. Those guys are much, much larger than the common snapping turtles, and they're not typically found in our area, although they do occasionally venture outside of range. Um, but for the common snapping turtles, they're much smaller, but they're actually more aggressive. Yeah. So we always tell people if they're going to move a turtle out of the road, uh, make sure you do so in the direction they're traveling because that turtle, as Mackenzie noted, probably has a pretty small range and they know where they're going. They and if you so take them across the road from where they came, they're just going to turn around and go back. Mm -hmm. They're not going to listen to you. <laughs> but they will somewhere along the line thank you if you move them across the road in the direction they're moving. I can't get enough of these yellow-headed box turtles. They are so cool. But I also, before we wrap things up, if you look here from a distance, hmm, doesn't look like much. Looks like there's just a bunch of bark and mulch there, but look closely. Who's there? Those are the McCord's box turtles. Mackenzie says these are the McCord's box turtles, and they're doing exactly what box turtles are trying to do this time of year, and that's cover up, maybe huddle together, but those Eastern box turtles are covering up in your yard right now. And they're gonna take a, box turtles don't truly hibernate, but what do they do? They slow down during the they winter months. They slow down, they go into a type of brumation, in other words, a type of reptilian hibernation where they slow down, they may still occasionally eat and so forth. They don't necessarily eat tons and tons and sleep the whole winter like a bear, um, but they are gonna slow down their digestive system. Um, so they're not gonna have to eat quite as often. In other words, metabolism slows down. And um, they do go into much more of a dormancy state. They're much more lazy and they kind of hide out and wait for it to get a little bit warmer. Sounds like me. During the winter, I get a little more lazy <laughs> and I like to hide out until it's warmer. <laughs> All right, Mackenzie, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you during Oddtober to talk about uh, some of the beautiful baby turtles that we have here in the Tennessee Aquarium's new turtle nursery in the brand new Turtles of the World Gallery. Here's somebody else who's taking a little nap this afternoon. A little, little siesta under the spotlights. Here's our spiny turtle again peeking at us through the leaves that we have in there. And also out in the gallery you can see some of the wonderful exhibits that we have in the new Turtles of the World Gallery. Again, we're here in the turtle nursery at the Tennessee Aquarium. 
We hope to see you soon. We got plenty more of the October live streams coming up 3.30 afternoons during the month of October. Please check our website for that complete schedule of Facebook live events coming up. We thank you for tuning in. We hope you'll join us for another special behind the scenes peek. Um, trying to remember what else we got this week. We've had some really good ones so far and we've got some more scheduled out through the rest of the month. And those are on our Facebook page and also on our website. So thanks again for tuning in. We hope to see you soon at the Tennessee Aquarium in beautiful downtown Chattanooga.